Good evening, my name is James Euler. I work for Murray City Fire Department and my presentation is going to be on the AirTrack video innovation device. And the purpose of making this uh, training video is because the AirTrack innovation device is fairly new for us at Murray City Fire Department. Uh, we demoed several different types of video innovation devices. We weighed the costs versus uh, the user friendliness of them and then we voted as a department and this won the majority of the vote. So we purchased them, we put them on all of our apparatus and then we had a problem because we had a relatively low success rate innovating with this and initially the numbers were pretty dismal. We had a, less than a 50 percent first pass innovation success rate with this. So hopefully with this video, show some, uh, some tips and tricks, some technique aspects that will help us to be a little more proficient with this device. <clears throat> the AirTrack is a video innovation device. This is the camera itself. And the camera attaches to a one-time disposable blade. And the blades are sized. This is an infant, pediatric, small adult, and regular adult. So for the purpose of the training tonight, we're gonna to be using a pediatric blade. And the pediatric blade uses an endotracheal tube anywhere between 4.0 and 5.5. When you pull it out of the packaging, it has an eye cup. You can actually insert the device, visualize through the eye cup, but then you're having to lean over a patient just as you were if you're doing a regular uh, endotracheal innovation. So for the most part, we remove the eye cup and attach the camera to the blade. Once you attach the camera to the blade, it powers it on automatically. It gives you the battery indicator. Gives you an LCD screen that's a picture from the end of the distal end of the blade. And that's where the camera is. Once you attach the camera to the blade, we have ours programmed automatically to start video recording as soon as it's set up. That way we don't forget to push the, the video record button. Also, there's a pediatric mode. So you push the, the pediatric mode. What that does is it adjusts the light for a smaller airway with the pediatric. The 180 degree button allows you to innovate uh, for instance, someone who is in a seated position allows you to do it backwards or upside down. So this is the regular view. Uh, it has the menu button that gives you other options um, once we get there. So you can go to the gallery. You can review still photos of your innovations, video of the innovations. Uh, it's Wi-Fi connected, so we can download these videos and review them later for quality assurance purposes. Uh, so we'll go back to our live camera. This is what it looks like. <clears throat> now to begin, once we pull this out of the packaging, you actually have to turn the light on by pushing this orange button. What that does, it turns this heated element on, and what that does, the heated element prevents fogging of the camera once it's inserted into the patient's uh, airway. So that takes about 30 seconds to fully warm up and get uh, prepared for intubation. During that time, during that 30 seconds, you can set the rest of your intubation supplies up. So we'll come over here. Like I said, we've chosen a, a pediatric blade with the camera. Take it out of the packaging. So for the purposes of this training, we're gonna say I have a partner. He's got an OPA uh, inserted into the patient's airway. He's bagging, he's oxygenating the patient. The real key to success for any innovation is taking some time on the front end to prepare, to get everything set up. Uh, for instance, we have our suction ready, we'll have it on, tuck the yonker just under their shoulder. That way, anytime I'm manipulating the airway, if I need to suction secretions or blood, I can just grab my yonker and do that there. Another thing is positioning of the patient. So with this particular device, 
We don't want to hyperextend the airway like we used to do when we were doing uh, traditional laryngoscopy. We want the patient in a, a neutral position. So if you have to manipulate the patient's head to obtain that neutral position, you can use a towel or something else like that. Also, we want to select the appropriate tube size. So here I have a 5.5 tube. I'm going to test the cuff, make sure the integrity is there. You may want to use a bougie. A bougie inserts into the tube. This is just a added device. If you have trouble passing the tube through the vocal cords, you can actually push the bougie through because of the smaller lumen size, push it through the cords. Once it's through the cords, then you just railroad the tube over it and then take the bougie out. So that's another tool that we can use to increase our success with the innovation. You also want to have a backup. So in case our primary method of innovation fails, we also want to have a backup just in case. We want to get all of our equipment prepped and ready to go while our partner is ventilating. <clears throat> One thing about the endotracheal tube, it has to slide into this channel and to do that it has to have some lubrication. So what we would do, we would put some KY jelly and I like to just put it inside of the packaging where the blade came out of, squirt some in there and then I can just lubricate the distal end of the tube that way. The ET tube then inserts into the track. You advance it till it's just about to the tip of the clear plastic there. That way, once it's there, you can kind of see it right in the corner of the frame. You don't want to push it too far because then it will obstruct your view of the cords. So you want to back it up so it's just barely visible in the frame. Once we've all prepared, we've got our backup, we've got all of our tools, then we can begin our innovation. So we're gonna direct our partner to stop ventilating. He will then remove the OPA. Now, the key to success with this device is finesse. We don't wanna muscle it. You don't wanna grab around the handle this way because once you do that, it says blade detached so when you when you grip it too hard it pushes the camera up off of the blade and then you lose your picture it will stop recording so it's a finesse you can only have to use three fingers to insert this you start horizontally put it into the patient's mouth and what you do is you follow the hard palate the soft palate to the posterior oropharynx once you get to that point, you can just simply tilt the blade back. You can see I'm just using two fingers right now. Tilt the blade back until you see the vocal cords. Now the one biggest mistake that we've noticed is people inserting the blade too far. You can still see the cords, but you're not going to be able to pass the tube effectively through that. So it's just into the posterior oropharynx where you can see the vollecula, the blade kind of inserts into the epiglottis. And then you insert the tube through the vocal cords, like so. Once you've done that, you can tap on the screen and it takes a still picture. That way you've verified with a video recording and a still picture that your tube is placed in the correct spot. That way you can actually take this into the receiving emergency room, show the physician, look, we innovated. This is our verification that the tube is in the correct place. And then at that point, once you have your verification, you pull the tube away from the blade, secure it, and then you just simply pull the blade out of the airway, set it aside. You can then inflate the cuff. The partner will then 
take the mask portion off of the BVM, attach that to the tube, and ventilate. So we're looking for chest rise and fall. We're going to auscultate with a stethoscope for bilateral breath sounds. We're going to auscultate the epigastrum to notice the absence of gastric noises, looking for misting in the tube. And then we would also attach our end tidal capnography to look for adequate ventilations that way. So hopefully this information, these tips and techniques will help us to have an improved success rate with our air track innovation device. Thank you.